What's up, Well2 family? It's Isaac once again. In today's video, I got my good friend Rico represent, rep, represent, representing the Well Lab. We actually used to work together back in the day at HP Piping Solutions. In today's video, he's gonna be showing you guys how to do a mirror weld in a boiler setup. Please stay tuned. on well to family my name is Rico for those of y'all who don't know me I have my own uh, YouTube channel called the well lab you can check me out I post daily vlogs anything related to welding traveling go check me out I'll have it for you today I'll be doing some mirror welding I learned how to mirror weld back when I was at the shipyard back when I was 18 years old that's the first job that I took and I learned a lot and today I'm gonna show you how to get down on some mirror welding okay guys you went to school you can pass all your tests you know how to do 2g 3g 4g whatever it is you could tig stick whenever you master this you want to start taking on some more restricted welds you know uh, once you can put a bead with tig through the top with no issue you're ready to move on to these type of welds i recommend you to learn how to do this it will help you out on the field and it will keep you employed because there's not a lot of welders that could do real tight uh welds Remember guys, tight fits and bat fits make good welders. So in today, uh, I'll show you the tools that I'll be using to uh, weld this procedure. Of course, you need a mirror. Uh, this is a mirror that I made, but you can also have some more on Amazon. Uh, I custom made this one, you gotta have a magnet on it so you can put it on the pipe or whatever it sticks to help you weld better. The other thing that you're gonna need is some pliers to cut your wire. This is a tight weld, so you'll be bending your rod in all type of angles. You're gonna have to cut it, so make sure you have one of these handy. And of course, you need a good welding hood. I decided to use this one. The weld's so far away from my root that I need to get close up on the pipe, and you need to get as close as possible. Other hoods will be in your way, so I decided to use this leather hood for today's uh, weld. Okay, guys, for this weld right here, the rules are I have to do the whole weld right through here. I cannot stick my hands out because when you're on the field, you cannot just stick your hands around. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna pretend that they have more pipe going on down the line. So everything needs to be done through this little uh, spot right here. And like I said, you need the pliers because I'm gonna be bending my rod on top of angles to try to get the backside. And one more thing, like I said, whenever you start learning, start learning how to put, put the root, just looking through the gap, that will save you a lot of trouble and it'll make everything much easier for you. Uh, for today's video, uh, I decided to use a regular torch. It's a flex head. You will need a flex head to be able to bend it to whatever angle you need. A lot of people like the mini rigs and it does just good of a job, but I prefer to use this one. It's a 1 8 tungsten in here. And uh, for my roots, I'll be using 332. I'm currently running at 85 amps with just two tacks on there. Okay, whenever you do these type of welds, it's really important to know where you put your tacks at. You do not want your tack right in the front of you because it will block your view. You want to put it on the side so whenever you do the back roots, you can easily have that window to do the whole back. I'm going to only go about halfway to right here. I'm going to stop, I'm going to jump, and I'm going to switch over to my left hand and start doing the root with my left hand like this. And I'm once again halfway, stop. Then I'll have my tie-in right here. And you always want to have your tie-ins right in the front where you can easily see them. Okay guys, well I'm about to start and get to it. Okay, uh, whenever you start the route, you always want to start about a quarter behind to let it heat up so you have a good uh, tying. You want to keep your rod on the top bevel so whenever you come down, the route doesn't overlap and drips down. You're playing with gravity right now, so make sure to have that rod on the top bevel. I prefer to use 332 because it's easier to control and you have more time to uh, fix mistakes. You can drip it in just like stainless, just keep feeding that wire. If you get sucked back, that means you're not consistently feeding that wire. You need to be consistent into pushing that rod in there, keep on walking, pushing that rod in there, keep on walking. Whenever you come to your tying, you need to make sure that you have enough metal in there. The way I like to do it is once I tie in, I like to keep traveling until I get to about six o'clock and that will be my stopping point I'm gonna go ahead and grind my tying, make sure it's grinded uh, really, really good before you tie in. And I'm gonna jump into my left side and just drag that window, close that window up, and you should be good to go. Uh, whenever your gap is closing up, you can do two things. You can crank it up five more, and you usually have closure with that because you only have two tacks. Whenever my gap is closing up, I like to break the walls, 
uh, keyhole. When you, once you see that keyhole, you feed wire into there, you keep a wall going. Same thing as you're doing stainless. That's why it's really, really good to use that 332 because it was going to drip right in there. Make sure that little drip goes into your keyhole and you keep on walking. Now I switched over to my left hand. It's easier for me because I'll be able to have more control. It's really important that uh, y'all start practicing trying to use your left hand if you're right-handed because once you get to the field, there's a lot of times where it's more comfortable just using your left hand. The key to using your left hand is just to be resting your hand somewhere where it's nice and sturdy. So all you got to do is go up and down. And like I said, remember, always keep your rod on the top bevel. Since you are playing with gravity, it will help you out. It will make your root look a lot better. Alright, I did the whole backside, which is uh, the hardest part. Now it gets really easy. You know, uh, the, I always think that doing the back is, is, is real, real hard. The mirror weld is pretty easy to me. But uh, whenever you weld, you want to carry the metal and stop halfway. And then you jump to the other side uh, to avoid the pipe from warping too much. But uh, I'm almost done. I'm about to uh, get into my tie-in. And whenever I tie in, I'm going to feather my uh, tacks and that will be it for the root. Whenever you start back up with TIG, make sure to always heat up your tack before you jump straight into it so you can get a nice fusion in there, nice stop and start. I usually go about a quarter behind, then I jump into it. I'm coming on my tack right now. Make sure to have a nice feather on there and just keep feeding it. Remember guys, the key to getting a good root is to consistently feed it. If you're getting sucked back, it means you're not putting enough wire on there. That's the major key. I came across my tack and I'm gonna keep it going to about halfway. And like I said, you know, notice how it's starting to close up on me. So, oh, so heat up the walls, open that keyhole and feed. And notice how my rod stays on the top bevel guys. You don't want that root to drip over. You want everything to be nice and neat in there. All right, guys, I'm almost done with this pipe. Uh, I got about a window, about an inch and a half open. When you're on the field, you'll get special tools, which is air tools that allow you to fit in the pipe, grind, buff, cut, whatever you need to do. I don't have those tools with me today, so I'm gonna use my grinder. I can fit my grinder in here, but like I said, uh, on the field, you will get a different spe uh, specific set of tools. Whenever you're doing these type of welds, you always want to make sure you're comfortable and you're nice and sturdy because these are real tight welds. The reason why I like using 332 is that you could just keyhole it in there. You just let it drip and it falls right in there. Kind of like whenever you uh, do stainless. And like I said, notice rods on top bevel and just dripping it in there and bringing it down, opening up that keyhole. Okay, the key to uh, learning how to weld with the mirror is uh, there's three things when you're welding, which is uh, travel speed, uh, depth, which is how much you push in, and uh, how wide you're going. So whenever you're welding uh, with the mirror, you're basically gonna keep your travel speed the same and you're gonna move your hand up and down the same way. The only thing you're using the mirror for is to guide you to see if you need to whip it up higher or lower to stay within the bevel. Uh, for instance, if you're shaving, you know, when you shave, you're just shaving the same way you're traveling up and you're just using the mirror to let you know to move a little bit more to the right, if that makes sense. But uh, man, it's, 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 it takes some time. It just takes training your mind to know that you're using the mirror so everything's opposite. So the best thing I could tell you is just move your hand the same way. If you want to learn how to weld with the mirror, I suggest trying something easy like welding stick vertical. So. All you have to do is move left and right and you'll be watching the mirror as you're traveling up. Okay, whenever I use the mirror, I like to put my mirror in the front and travel towards it. Uh, the reason I like to do that is because uh, I get a good view and I can see where my bevels are at. The view that you will get is, uh, let's pretend that you're doing some 3G overhead and you're traveling towards you. You'll get the same view whenever you're using the mirror, which is all you're watching is your puddle go up and down from the top bevel to the bottom. 
So, like I said, yeah, it's, it's easier to travel towards the mirror. Okay, guys, what I did was I bent my rod. Um, by bending my rod, it allows me to weld the whole backside at this angle, and all I gotta do is keep traveling this way. Uh, this, that's a method that I prefer. I also switched over to my pancake, uh, simply because uh, I don't like using that leather hood, but in the field, you will use it at all times. But for educational purposes, uh, I just decided to use my hood so you can hear me talk and explain as I'm welding this. For my high pass, I am running at 100 amps right now. You don't want to go too, too high because this is a small pipe. This is scheduled 40. And like I said, I'm just using the mirror to guide me from up and down, making sure I'm hitting the top bevel, making sure that everything's fusing nice and neatly. Keep, keep your rod once again, top bevel, you're playing with gravity, you don't want that to hang over your bevel. So I did all the backside already, I don't need the mirror anymore, I have a clear view of what I'm doing now. This is the easy part. Whenever you do these uh, two belts, you just want to do a root, one, hot pass which will also be your fill and your cap you also want to try to do a 2b cap you really don't want to go over that and for your cap you want to keep it about a 332 at the most you don't want to have it all bulky all right guys uh i already did the fill like i said whenever you do these tubes you should do your root and the hot pass should be your fill so I got it pretty much flushed out. I'm gonna put a 2B cap on here. I decided to turn my machine down just a little bit. Uh, I did my hot pass at 100, so I just went down five to about 95. I'm gonna see how it feels, but I think 95 should do the job. And uh, whenever you do these tubes, you don't wanna over cap it. You wanna keep the cap under a 332. You don't wanna have all that bunk of metal on there, so be careful with that. I decided to cap it with a 1 8 rod. Same technique, bend my rod, same technique, travel to, uh, towards the mirror go all the way around and catch the sides. All right, let's get to it. Whenever you cap, you want to have your rod about halfway through the pipe. You don't want to go too wide, so you know, once again, gravity, come down to about your bevel. You want to keep everything as uniform as you can. It's pretty hard to keep everything uniform whenever you're using the mirror. So try to do what you can. If something do mess up, the thing about TIG, you can always go back and dry wash it. I'm still using uh, the 1 8. Whenever you cap, make sure you have your rod right in between the bevels. You don't want to have it under or top. You want it right in between so you get a nice little pretty bead in there. You, you do the same technique. Start from the top and drag it down to the bottom. As soon as you get to the bottom bevel, come up and just keep traveling down. The key to getting a good cap is having good temperature. If you're too hot, you can get undercut. And if you're too cold, it's gonna look too bulky. So make sure you know uh, your heats and you know how hot that pipe is. Okay, I just ran my first bead on my cap. I'm doing a 2B cap. You don't want to go more than that. Uh, you want to keep the rod about halfway of your bevel and travel down so you don't overstack it. For 
My stringer number two, once again, still using the same uh, technique. Uh, you want to be really, really careful because sometimes you do get undercut on top. If you have to, let the pipe cool down a little bit before you jump back into it. Whenever you do these type of welds, it's really hard to walk a cup, so you gotta get used to just freehand. It's nearly impossible to walk it, so you just gotta be really careful that your tungsten doesn't get stuck on there and you leave the tungsten behind. And that's pretty much it guys. Uh, like I said, this mirror technique is difficult. It takes practice, but with practice, you're able to get it and you'll be able to start tackling on these hard uh, fits to weld and you'll be able to stand out from the rest of the welders. Have it guys uh, I'll finish today hopefully I was able to teach you something new today remember guys tight fits bad fits make good welders make sure you stand out from the rest of these welders man uh, don't be scared to tackle on a little bit of high low don't be that welder giving your fitter a hot time a hard time because the fit ain't perfect stuff like this will set you apart from the rest of the guys and it'll give you job security and hopefully they notice that and it'll bring you on to the next one I'd like to thank well too for having me on the show today hopefully I get to come back and shoot more videos for y'all if so, uh, leave a comment. Let them know to bring me back on the show. Make sure you comment, subscribe, and don't forget to check me out on my channel, The Well Lab. I'll have tons of content coming out. I'll be traveling pretty soon. So make sure you plugged in. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.